Welcome to a minute module on SEL in distance learning for transitional kindergarten through second grade. I'm Jodine Smith and I'll be your trainer for today. I'm so glad you are here to affirm what you already do and hopefully learn some new things to support your students during distance learning. CASEL stands for the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. They have established five competency areas that have become the standard for SEL learning. These competencies are self-awareness, self-management, relationship skills, social awareness, and responsible decision-making. You can see from this diagram, the five competencies are surrounded by the places and ways these competencies are achieved. Crucial to meeting social-emotional needs are classrooms, schools, home, and communities. Districts and schools have always played a part in addressing social and emotional needs, but are recognizing an increased need to direct focus and attention on SEL learning. Many districts are adopting actual curriculum and implementing PBIS strategies which help address these competencies. But our need in a distance learning format is more immediate. Today we will focus on what you can do to help address the SEL needs of your students right now. The benefits of doing so include better effort, improved attitudes, and reduced emotional stress. These benefits will extend into your physical classrooms when you return to them as well. There's a lot that can be said and done regarding social emotional learning, but for today our focus will be on three signature practices that you can include in your digital classroom each day. Welcoming activities, routines, and rituals, engaging strategies, and optimistic closures. Let's take a closer look at each one and identify some quick and easy ways you can address them during your day. Just as in a physical classroom, students need to feel like they are part of the group and know what is going on. Welcoming activities help set the tone for the day. They can help students with a fresh start as they enter the classroom, despite what has already happened earlier in the morning. They're intended to make students feel like they belong. Routines for starting the day help students feel comfortable in a classroom, even a digital classroom. This time should be spent building community and connecting to the work ahead. There are so many wonderful ways to begin the day. Starting the virtual day can be very similar to what you would do in a physical classroom. Because of the physical distance between you and your students, these start of the day activities are even more important. I love the idea of a virtual high five each person in the virtual classroom holds the palm of their hand up to the camera at the same time. You can even come up with a short saying or a chant everyone says as they give their high five. Something like, give a high five, me to you. You belong here, yes you do. What a great way to start the day, feeling like you belong and that you are part of the class. It is more difficult to gauge students' feelings in a Zoom room so consider starting the day with a feelings check-in. This can be as simple as having students draw a quick emoji to show their feelings on a piece of paper or a whiteboard and then holding that up to the camera. Or you can display a mood meter and have students identify how they are feeling using the meter. There are many mood meters available online. Just type mood meter in a search engine and tons will pop up. Students can post their responses in a chat or you can take time for each student to share aloud. Remember to take a few extra moments with students who may be needing some extra encouragement to boost their mood for the day. Routines and rituals establish community as well as set the tone for the day. Consider starting the day with the routine of a song or an activity. There are many welcome to school songs available on the internet. An example of an activity would be to play a name game or ask a would you rather question. The question can be related to something you did yesterday, will be doing today, or one just for fun, such as, would you rather ride a unicorn or a dragon? Even in a distance format, students can participate in class jobs. Having a job to do gives students a sense of responsibility to the class community as well, and it includes them in the larger group. Jobs in a distance format can include timekeeper, chat monitor, brain break leader, and weather checker. 
Just Google classroom jobs and distance learning and you'll see lists of jobs you can choose from. Use this opening time to connect to the work ahead for the day. This can be as simple as quickly reviewing what was learned the previous day and giving an indication of what is to come today. Read a book to students related to something that they will learn today. You can read a physical copy of the book, if you have it, or locate one online and share your screen with students. YouTube has many books that are animated and read out loud that you can share. Books help build background and foster an excitement and interest for what is to come. And actually, any text will do. Some of my favorite things to do to connect to the work ahead include telling a joke or a story. If students will be learning about the weather later in the day, tell a weather joke or a personal story about an encounter you had with the weather. Another way to connect to the work ahead is to take a survey or a poll. You can do this informally by having students simply raise their hands or standing up in front of the camera or you can use some of the tools available in most digital meeting platforms. Will you be learning about the weather? Ask students if they've ever seen a rainbow. Discuss the survey results. Another signature daily practice is engaging strategies. The idea is to promote active listening and participation, both individually and as a group. These are definitely more difficult in a distance learning format but with planning, there are options to make this happen. Just as in a physical classroom, consider the group size for each lesson you teach and activity you do. Is the lesson best suited for whole group? Would breakout rooms be more useful to allow students to participate? Does the lesson need to be taught in a small group? Especially in a distance learning format, the group size is an important piece to consider when planning a lesson. Utilize breakout rooms for smaller group discussions and projects. Just as in a physical classroom, breakout rooms reduce the number of students and allow for more participation. Additionally, many districts have built time into distance learning schedules to allow the teacher to meet with small groups. This helps with making personal connections and allowing students more time to participate than they would when the whole class is together. Don't have time for either? Allow students who need a little extra help or have a question or who you may want to encourage just a little bit more, have them stay on the whole group meeting with you after everyone else signs out. Using this time, you can offer a few moments of help or encouragement. There are many tools available on digital meeting platforms that can be useful for student engagement. If your students are able to type in the chat, that can be a really useful way for students to actively participate. Students can ask questions in the chat, or you can pose a question and allow students to respond in the chat. The yes no toggle button available in many digital meeting platforms can be used with all ages, but is especially useful for younger students who cannot effectively use the chat. Students can use it to respond to yes or no questions. Additionally, other icons are available on some platforms such as clapping hands, thumbs up, confetti, and heart emojis. Teach students how and when is appropriate to utilize these icons to build in response times throughout your lesson. Non-digital participation strategies such as assembling a class museum can be super engaging. This can be done from either objects students find around their houses or if they are able, images students cut and paste from the internet. For example, if you are learning about three-dimensional shapes, you can ask students to look for something that is the shape of a cube. Provide a few minutes for students to search for the object in their houses, and then allow them time to share with the group. This active engagement with the content will help provide many examples. And of course, students may bring some non-examples, which you can use to launch a discussion. Four Corners is an active participation strategy used in a physical classroom, which also works really well in a digital meeting. The idea is that there are four ways students can respond to a question or prompt. In a physical classroom, each corner of the classroom would represent one of the choices. Students would walk over to the corner to visually show their choice. In a digital classroom, this can still be done. Indicate choices to a prompt or question in each corner of a document. 
For older students, you can type in the response. For younger students, you can put a clip art image in each corner to show the response. Students can point to the corner of the screen to indicate their choice. Or you can number the corners and students can use their fingers to indicate their choice. Active participation can be as simple as sitting and standing. This works well for yes, no, or either or style questions. Students either sit or stand to show their responses. For example, after reading the book Harold and the Purple Crayon, you could ask, would you rather draw with only one color crayon like Harold did, or would you like to use all the colors of crayons? Stand if you would like to use one color, sit if you would like to use all the colors. You will be able to quickly and visually see which students answered each way. Finally, the teacher can make a goal for class participation. This helps monitor for how often students are actively participating. Set the goal for a class for how often they will need to participate. For example, two times in a 30 minute lesson. Make a point to use other strategies throughout the lesson in order for students to meet the goal. You can keep track by using digital stickers on a blank document or physical stickers you use as you hold them up to the camera. This encourages the class to work together to accomplish a goal. Incentivize students to meet the goal with some sort of class reward, such as their choice of brain break or digital lunch with the teacher. Before sending students offline for the day, ensure you have an optimistic closure for your school day. This means students should have a sense of accomplishment for what they did during the day, and you can use this time to support forward thinking as well. Have students think about what they accomplished during the day. This can be anything from a couple of words to a sentence. Whip around the digital classroom, call on specific students, or place students in a breakout room to share. Students can do a brain dump in which they share out all their learning for the day, and the teacher can record students' ideas on a sheet of chart paper or by typing them in a document. Have students use active participation strategies such as four corners or polling to tell what they thought was the most important thing from the day. Finally, students can display their work by holding it up to the camera or by sharing their screens. Each of these can be done in a whole group or small group breakout room. Encourage excitement for upcoming lessons by supporting forward thinking. Generate excitement for tomorrow's lesson on the same topic by giving a short summary of what they will do with the topic tomorrow or even just a quick hint to generate curiosity and excitement for returning to the class. You may also introduce the idea of a larger project in which students will apply their learning in some format. Finally, forward thinking does not only apply to tomorrow's lesson, it might apply to a future time or grade as well. You can hint at another point in students' careers in which they will learn more about the topic. For example, if students are learning about plants in first grade, you can hint at a future grade in which students will learn about how plants make their own food. When I was in a physical classroom, I always tried to pack up about 15 minutes before the end of the day. I would do a whip around the classroom in which each student would tell something they learned during the day. This serves so many purposes for me. First and foremost, it was a predictable way to end each day. Also, students were packed up and ready to go when the bell rang, and we weren't rushing to get out the door, with students and me feeling frantic about how the day was ending. Second, it gave each child time to reflect on what had happened during the day. In just a few minutes, students in my class summarized my whole day of teaching. Hopefully, when students' families asked, what did you learn today? The answer wasn't, nothing but rather they had had a number of things that had just been summarized for them that they could draw on. It also provided a sense of accomplishment for us as a class that the day had been productive. I would sometimes write down all the things students would say, and the list was long. The long list was definitely a sense of accomplishment. I also like to end the day by reading a short book on a topic that we study during the day or that we would study the next day. Reading aloud was always such a calming and community building activity for my students and for me. And a great way to end the day. Right before the end of the day, I would drop a hint about something they would do tomorrow. Sometimes it was as simple as, 
I'm so excited for what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to paint pictures of pumpkins. First graders love to paint. So guess what? They were all anxious to come to school the next day. And isn't that a great thing? What will be special about the next day's lessons? Will students put together a digital museum? Do you have a funny joke to share with them? Just a hint is enough for most kids. Although there is so much more to address in the area of social and emotional learning, hopefully this minute module has reinforced importance of many things that you are already doing, as well as given you a few new ideas about how you can support your students' social-emotional growth during this time of distance learning.